So, I've got... Ooh. So I got a big box here, and I'm quite excited about what's in it. Here on this channel, I talk about what it's like to experience life with legal blindness, and that involves technology, assistive technology, and a lot of that is actually mainstream tech like Macs. I, I talk about how like my modern Mac Mini is an accessible computer. I talk about why I got a MacBook Pro in 2009, it's my very first Mac. But even before that, Macs were accessible for blind people. What I've gotten here is a blast from the past. We've got an iMac G4 that I'm about to unbox. It is used, but the seller said it was in good condition. I will confirm that. Either this video will end early, and hey, we'll have a little unboxing, or we'll get all the way to the setup process and attempt to set up an iMac G4 with settings for the blind. I'm, I'm legally blind. This is the main component here. Unwrapping is what this is, not an unboxing. <laughs> Before we get to the main event, let's get to the accessories. So we've got power cable. It's not too different from the IMAX today, but still different enough. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this mouse. Oh man. So the side button here feels a little stuck. I think that's a button, right? Maybe it's not. Maybe it's supposed to feel that way. Keep in mind, I never had one of these uh, growing up. In fact, Chris here, um, remember our, our elementary school had one of these Macs and then all Windows computers. And it was always kind of a race. Everyone would try to go for the one Mac and then everyone else was stuck using Windows 98 on these old crappy Dells. That was my only experience with the iMac G4. Transparent design. This was very, I think, futuristic because it looked nothing like the standard beige or black plastic of like a lot of Windows computers. I don't know, Apple was really trying to like stand out in the market, which is fair. It's like they had four, five, six products alone, while most computer manufacturers probably made 30 different models. Definitely still holds up today to some extent. Remember back when Apple didn't make flat keyboards? There's definitely some heft and feel, and it's it's curved too, which is kind of nice. So that, that might be good ergonomically. Definitely not like the keyboards today. Oh, and then you also got two USB ports here on the back, probably USB 2.0 because this is from 2002. Now for the main event, I'm praying that this is still in one piece. So from what I recall, there is about three different variations of the specific computer. It had a 15 inch, a 17 inch, and a 20 inch. Well, you probably may have also wanted a pro computer by that point, and you would probably just upgrade with the G4 Cube or Power Mac. The nice thing though about this iMac again, much like the iMacs of today, and the latest iMac that was just announced, it's an all-in-one computer. So the base is what's holding all the internals, the CPU, GPU, the RAM, while the top is just simply a display. Whereas the iMacs of today, well, it's all pretty much in the display, and the base is typically just a, uh, a stand. But the nice part about having most of the components down at the base, at the bottom, this sort of cylinder, is that this iMac has like full on free room motion. Something that like, I wish a lot of monitors would have today, but just don't. The original commercial for this here in the US market, it had a man going up to the window where they were selling this computer. And the computer was like dancing, bobbing its head essentially. And the guy was mimicking it. And then the computer sticks its tongue out, which was the CD slide, yeah. No, there's a DVD CD slot here. For anyone born before this computer uh, even came out, we used to have CD slots in our computers, fun fact. So if anything, this computer is still a DVD player, at most, an all-in-one built-in DVD player if it can't do anything else. Real quick, let's take a look at the back just to sort of figure out what IO ports are here. Not sure what this one at the far end might be. That could potentially be the power, but maybe not. No, no, that's definitely not the power. This one feels like the power here in the center. It feels like three USB 2.0s. And then, oh, this might be Firewire. And what this was though was for data transferring. If, if you ideally shot video or photography, you probably wanted to transfer via Firewire. It's a faster protocol over USB, especially USB 2.0. Yeah, it's been succeeded by quite a few things since then. All right, and then we got the power, of course. 
And not sure what this one is. That might be dial up. That's where a dial up modem. So back in the day, if you wanted to connect to the internet, you couldn't use your home phone. Back in the day, we also had home phones. You couldn't talk on the phone or receive phone calls while you were using the internet. So most families only had like a dedicated maybe hour of internet a day, maybe less. Now I do know that this computer was capable of airport, um, essentially being Wi-Fi, uh, getting a Wi-Fi card. I'm not sure if it was built in. I don't think so. And then at the end here, okay, this, this seems like your headphone jack, your microphone port. Cool, and then power button. So the selection of IO is definitely uh, really nice back then. We don't typically get this this much IO nowadays, at least at least in our Apple ecosystem. So we're gonna go ahead, plug this in, hope it all goes well, and I'll be right back. And with the power of editing, we're back. This guy is plugged in. We've got our keyboard and our mouse all plugged in. I, I'm, I'm geeking out. I'm like really excited. I like never really got to experience too much of Apple in my youth. The most I really got to experience Apple, especially the accessibility of their operating system was with the iPod, iPod Classic specifically. Uh, I would never be able to even see a Nano. Don't even <laughs> try. And, and I could barely, if I could barely even see the uh, actual iPod video when that initially came out but I was able to learn and memorize the operating system and I knew the order of my music. So that was cool. And I was able to like just play movies and stuff and just listen to them. In terms of the actual accessibility, my first experience was actually like with an iBook, probably from around this time. And that was back when my, my visual teacher, my vision specialist teacher, uh, who, who would visit me at school, elementary school, like once a week, pull me out of class and like, hey. Anyway, he said in Mac OS Tiger, the latest version of the Mac, uh, OS 10 operating system, blind people could set up their computers and visually impaired people, people who just need to be able to zoom in and maybe have text to speech, things like that, where it can read things that you highlight and select. And I'm like, what? Computers can do that? And that like, I got real excited. And of course, like my family wasn't fully convinced on getting a Mac at the time. And, and it wasn't really until I was about 14 when we finally took that plunge and tried it. And especially because I really wanted to pursue video and Final Cut, Apple's own software, worked really well and integrated with their accessibility features. So that's a little bit of like my history, my experience with Mac and, and learning about the accessibility. And, and this is supposedly running Mac OS Tiger, the first version that shipped with there's a screen reader that was built in called voiceover and famous zoom that I love. And I'm probably gonna like <laughs> be disappointed with how bare bones these are in their first release. But like at the same time, I'm also very excited to kind of take a look back, pun intended. Time to boot her up, ready? Oh my gosh. I can hear it. There's a video. Whoa. <laughs> okay, this is really cool. I remember the Mac OS video that played during Snow Leopard because that's the version I started with. And many people still like say Snow Leopard was one of the best releases at launch. Uh, but man, I... Oh, gosh, I'm so excited. I think I'd like to learn. I know a little bit of voiceover for today, but I don't know how different it was back then. Voiceover quick start. Let's find out. If you have difficulty seeing the screen, I do. Voiceover can help you set up your computer. Okay, cool. It speaks descriptions of items on the screen and lets you control the computer using only your keyboard. Don't need you then. This is a pre-recorded narrator. One arrow key to continue. And it's going to change to a synthesized voice. So it's going to sound more robotic, more computer-like. Probably Alex, which anyone in the blind community would recognize Alex. Starting keyboard bright. That's not Alex. To hear their names, press the escape key at the top left <laughs> on the keyboard to stop practicing. Man, that is... That is not Alex. I. You. F. Cool. I know there's multiple voices you can change from. That's rough. <laughs> Escape. 
stop you people in practice. You use the voiceover cursor to move around the screen and hear descriptions of items yep. on the screen. Okay, I'm familiar with that. Try moving the voiceover cursor in the practice that follows. When you start using voiceover, my voice will be replaced by voiceover's synthesized voice. Not Alex. In the pop-up menu, press control <laughs> option space bar to show the menu items. In the pop-up menu. Locate the menu Sounds items. Sounds like he's got an accent. Press control option and the arrow keys. Then press control select the Probably should be listening. Menus. I wasn't the best student in school. Skip button for blank. Mac OS 10 setup assistant window. Seven items welcome. In just a few steps, you can register your Apple product, set up your computer, and sign up for a .Mac membership, which includes a powerful collection of software services specifically designed for your Mac. I don't know if that if works these days, select but... The country or region you're in, then click Continue. Table. Select Network Edit Secure Text. Go Back button. I don't think it's going to find any modern network, to be honest. Ooh. Local network. My computer does not connect to the internet. My... Yeah. Press I don't computer. think this one's going to connect to the internet here. Right. Go back, but continue, but press into registration okay. information. Okay. Let's... Please enter your personal information. <laughs> Warranty for your Apple product does not require you to register the product. The warranty for my Apple product, I don't think even exists anymore. <laughs> uh. <laughs> to finish setting up your computer, you okay. need to set the date and time. Yeah, that makes sense. So today's date, date January 30, 2006. <laughs> even you were a little bit ahead of your time. Done button. Okay. Yes, done button. That's what I was looking for. All right, where are we at? Is it setting? Might be loading. Huh. Hey, I mean, I did it. I set up a Mac from 2002 without looking. And believe me, even, even if it looks like I might be looking, I can't see anything. So although we're in the computer now with voiceover, this is where you can navigate the web, such as Safari, of course, I'm not currently on the web, uh, but you can interact with many of the applications. Now, I'm sure, especially back then, not every application was fully voiceover accessible, and I'm sure voiceover had many shortcomings, as even when we were setting up the computer, I ran into a few issues, such as like, things just not being formatted fully properly, like prompts or, or dialog boxes would be underneath to give me more context, but by that point, I'm already done the text field, and it's like, oh, it would've been nice to know that that was optional, such as a password hint, before I start typing in the password hint. Uh, but it doesn't give you that information beforehand. I wanna show you though how I mainly interact with a Mac, which is actually Zoom. And I wanna see how extensive Zoom is on a computer from 2000. So I'm gonna open up the accessibility menu, and this can be accessed on any Mac today. Dashboard and expose desktop and screen saver dock button international this hardware CDs and DVD displays CDs and DVDs energy saver but keyboard and mouse so a lot of this is still very similar to what system preferences looks like today on Mac OS print and fax but sound print button. and fax never mind I take that back universal access button universal access so it didn't even call it accessibility. I believe you would search for accessibility and it would go to universal access, but yeah. Back then, the option for system preferences was universal access. Press universal access button. Interesting. Tap for voiceover. Okay, so voiceover has its own section, probably just because of how in-depth voiceover is. Um, interesting. This was separated, again, much like how it is today, it's, it's, there's certain sections like display and, and zoom and voiceover and switch control, keyboard, uh, hearing. We managed to use voiceover to find our way into turning voiceover off. <laughs> um, I'm going to move on to trying out zoom. Now that we're actually in the operating system, I'm gonna show you how I primarily navigate a Mac 99% of the time. And that's with zoom or text-to-speech, but 
at a lighter degree than what voiceover is, which voiceover is a descriptive navigator, essentially. Whereas with Zoom, it's it's I'm using my remaining 10% or, or less of vision to navigate the computer, but having reassurance on what I'm clicking in the area where my mouse is because of text-to-speech uh, let me know where I am. Now, I don't think it's that in-depth back then where it, it didn't like navigate with, with voice, um, but you could use text-to-speech in any selectable text from what I recall. But let's find out, let's, let's jump into this. Okay, so there's Zoom, and I believe the on was this option here. Uh, now what lets me zoom in and out? I believe the, oh man, I typically always use zoom with a mouse, specifically a trackpad uh, with all the scrolling gestures, but good old zoom of command option plus and minus. And I'll be honest, this display is not bad looking. This is actually a, for, for 2003, when a lot of the computers were like these, these old CRT displays that just flickered and, and really harsh on the eyes, man, there was always a joy in using Apple's displays. Just the, the, the display tech that they used was really just, it was just so, so easy on the eyes and it still is very much today, unless you're using a MacBook Air from any time before the Retina MacBook Air. That was horrible. Oh my gosh, yeah. So like, I can actually read this. This says zoom on and off. Whoa, I can read, kind of. Like I can read, I can recognize. Like, don't give me a paragraph to read. It won't happen. Let's explore our zoom options. So it brings up this other window. I'm very familiar with this because I always go into like the advanced options. Set a range. See, it's already set to like the kind of zoom that I like. So I can zoom out a little bit just to get an idea of the scope of what's here. To zoom past the maximum, hold down. Show, ooh, show preview rectangle when zoomed out. Interesting. Continuously with the pointer. Yes, I love using that personally. There was no option here from what I can make out to do like a scroll wheel, basically to drag zoom in and out like I do nowadays. It was always kind of relying on command option plus and minus. Interesting. Now that's cool, that's fine. I can, I mean, I can work with that, but yeah. There's all these different options where you can basically have the zoom in the area, only move once you're on the edge, uh, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I always feel like I'm dragging my screen and I just feel like it's a bit more effort. Um, there's also keep the pointer always in the center. And I, I guess some people like this. I'm also not really the biggest fan of this one. It still feels like I'm just, I'm dragging, it. you know? I, I don't know, I am I always liked it when it was continuously with a pointer. It makes me feel like I'm still moving a mouse naturally and the computer is just keeping up with me. I don't know why. This has always felt better to me, but I love that there are options. And even back then, this zoom <laughs> honestly feels a lot better than what Windows has with magnifier and 2021, this is from 2002. There's a reason why I went Mac from Windows Vista. I mean, besides Windows Vista having a slew of its own issues like viruses and all these just glitches and bugs and, and poor software support, but man, the Zoom. The Zoom is what really has kept me on Mac OS. It's not just about having the ability to zoom in, but it's about like it flowing and feeling good. Man, display. So there's white on black, which is basically just invert colors. So that's kind of cool. You can increase the contrast. I typically do this a little bit. Um, and okay, so you can also decrease, reduce, but uh, decrease though works too, but increase and reduce contrast. So that's cool. Enable access for assistive devices. Ooh, what does that mean? What's an assistive device? Maybe like a braille display, maybe. I'm not sure, but it's an option to enable. So you can also go grayscale. So if like colors just really aren't your thing, if you're not like into that whole color thing, not everyone is, that's fine too. I'm gonna keep my color though. And again, there's all these keyboard shortcuts that already just exist. So, you know, if I ever want to just go switch to my invert colors, I just hit, looks like a command option 
Shift eight, is that what that is? Command option shift eight. No, I don't know. Hearing. So there's one thing I do actually enable with hearing, and I talked about this in my most recent Mac Mini video, but I actually enable this flash because when I'm zoomed in, notifications up here or dialog boxes, I, I may not see them. They may not uh, be noticeable for me. So anytime my computer needs my attention, it can simply just flash the screen. I can pretty much register what it wants and I'll go find the dialog box that it wants my attention towards. Of course, back then, it really didn't have notifications. That whole concept of notifications, notification center, control center, did not exist in this day and age. And sticky keys, I remember kids enabling that all the time on Windows. Cursor size is another one that is very much vision related, um, but it's just in the mouse section and uh, I can make my mouse very pixelated. <laughs> uh, let's just, let's make it larger. I will, let's do a larger mouse. All right, we're gonna head back into our system preferences here and speech. Is this text to speech? Microphone, internal mic, there was an internal microphone on this thing? This thing had a microphone. I don't know if that was common for computers at the time. I wanna say no. Calibrate, I can calibrate it. Hello. It seems to be working. It's picking up, uh, I'm, I'm seeing it light up. Whoa, that's wild. What time is it? Quit this application, open the dock. Wait, what? Calibrating improves. Oh, there's voice recognition commands. So this is before Siri or Google Assistant, but you could do commands, oh. What? We're gonna raise the volume. Listen only while key is pressed. Listening key is escape. All right, I don't really feel like reading. <laughs> I can't really read beyond a certain point without my eyes uh, exploding. So I remember finding this thing actually some time ago, like back in like Snola bird days. But if I hold down escape, what time is it? It's 5.43. Whoa. Um, buy me Bitcoin. Mine Bitcoin? Okay, it's not recognizing that. But what I really came to the speech section for, I actually just found it. I, <laughs> I'll be honest, I didn't recognize it right away. Uh, text to speech. Isn't it nice to have a computer that will talk to you? Yeah, sometimes. All right, Fred Bruce. Bruce is British. I remember Bruce. I sure like being inside this fancy computer. It is quite fancy, even to today's standards. Fred. Uh, if I remember... I sure like being inside this fancy computer. Junior? My favorite food is pizza. <laughs> oh, pizza, pizza. <laughs> Ralph? The sum of the squares of the legs. The sum We're not doing of Ralph. The squares of Ralph. the legs. No. I sure like being inside this fancy computer. We'll stick to Bruce. Bruce is fine. We also, you know, have our female voices, novelty. Novelty was just kind of strange synthesizer voices. Just an example here, here's bad news. The light you see at the end of the tunnel. Okay, so this Mac has a resolution. It's an LCD display. It's a resolution of 1024 by 768. Um. Let's see if this works. I don't know if this is gonna connect, but are we on? Are we on the internet? I think we're on the internet. Whoa, hold up. <laughs> oh man, this is not displaying websites very well now. Man, Google looks messed up. Google's seen better times. Can we, can this play YouTube? I don't know if we're gonna get anything from this. Man, it's so slow. The Wi-Fi is so slow in this thing. Either that or, oh no, it's still loading, but. Nothing works. <laughs> the modern like, internet just has evolved. Like you're on dial right now. <laughs> well, this, it's amazing. This thing has Wi-Fi built in. I know, that's why I didn't even know that. <laughs> I can't even access <laughs> apple.com. <laughs> like apple.com is so advanced nowadays. I, I can't view Apple's own website. Um, there are already some preset bookmarks, interestingly enough, Amazon, eBay, Yahoo. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at the pre-chosen news sources. You got New York Times, CNN, Washington Post, Los Angeles Times, BBC News, CBS, CNET, and Wired. You gotta get your tech fill as well. But man, 
They didn't even respect Fox News back then. <laughs> I don't blame them. The web is kind of a disaster. Don't know if we're gonna do much here. I am curious what version of macOS this could potentially get up to. Maybe Leopard, but maybe that's another experiment for another time. There's definitely a community out there that are keeping like macOS Tiger in these older versions uh, alive and well. I don't really, I, I've not done any research ahead of time. So if you would like to know what else is potentially able to be done with this in the modern day, let me know in the comments. I'm, I'm happy to do some research. Maybe you know of some uh, resources already. I'm curious in those comments down below, what is your experience with experiencing accessibility from like the early 2000s on a computer? It could have been Windows, it could have been Mac, maybe uh, Linux, I, I don't even, I don't even know what is happening over there, but it could have been something as simple as activating sticky keys by accident, or maybe you got voiceover to turn on by accident, or on purpose, depending on the user. So let me know in those comments down below, what is your level of experience with accessibility on the early 2000s computers? I want to hear from you. If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to see more content around the universal benefits of accessibility or the perspective of someone who is legally blind and lifestyle, but technology as well from both new and old tech, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I also chat with people who just see the world different and, and come from all these cool backgrounds within entertainment, tech, business, whatever it may be. I interview folks and we talk on my podcast, The See Different Show. If you're into all that, that subscribe button is for you. And apparently YouTube doesn't know how to actually program the subscribe button for its intended use. So be sure to hit that bell for notifications so you actually get notified when I post new content. I hope that you could see something different today and I'll hear you next time. Bye.